So here we are again. Or to be more precise, here we are in the Brecon Beacons National Park, preparing our bikes for the next edition of the Adventure Country Tracks. I wanna go somewhere far away. I wanna go it's a route that will lead us through Wales, all the way over to the famous Isle of Man, and up to the remote regions of Northern England. Never heard about the Adventure Country Tracks? Basically, what we've been up to for the past few years is hunting for the most desirable adventure routes in Europe for you and for your adventure bike. After Portugal, Greece, Romania, Italy and the Pyrenees, the United Kingdom will be the latest addition to a collection of carefully crafted GPS tracks made to share with you and to be ridden by you. This is funny, eh? I have to find a part of my pannier that Felipe hasn't mangled, eh? Is that right, Felipe? Sorry? And I'm trying to find a part of my panniers where you have mangled, don't trust scratched, him. or broken. It's not true! Felipe! It's not true! Don't trust him! Felipe! Massive then, Felipe! It's just. It's just don't lend your bike to this guy. He'll, he'll wreck it for you. It's back on the back and run. So, Mirko, Yes, it's, sir. It's a pretty similar picture to last year. I'm trying to find the right setup for my handlebars. What have you learned? Uh, I've learned um, that I do not finish this work with the help of Elvio. Of course, he's not able to hold the handlebar straight, so the tool always goes flim. Told you. So now I have Jonathan here, you know, and nothing falls down. I mean, it's it's just easy. It feels good, right? It does. Yeah. I'm sorry, Elvio. Despite this year's summer airport chaos, we somehow managed to get all 12 riders from four different countries and our media crew all together, just in time for our trip starting tomorrow morning. Only someone, not to say Mirko, was a little tough on the battery of his Pan America today. So yeah, so we're preparing the bikes today and we all brought the bike to a different place where we have a little bit more space. And my bike thought, yeah, why should I start? I don't need to start, it's work. Um, so the battery's dead. So we had like Jonathan going through all over UK to find a charger. And now I have my personal mechanic here, uh, Charlie. He yeah. joins the ride just to be, you know, Take care about my bike and stuff. And I was uh, told this was going to be, you know, four star, <laughs> is what I was told. <laughs> you know, I'd have been happy with three, but they said four. No, 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 no. You four. will get, you will get one thousand stars okay. tonight because you can see the stars from here, right? So yeah, and now we're doing a charging overnight, and hopefully the bike will turn on tomorrow. Yeah, they're, they're loose underneath. Let's see. There's one more. Okay, make sure we can see the rubber. Very tight though. Yeah, it's good engineering. Well, I, that, all my people, these are my pupils, and um, <laughs> I, sort of, I, I let the battery go down on purpose so that it, to see how prepared they are. The next day starts with all problems solved, ready to take the first breath of our new adventure. Recording. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to... ACT 2022 ACT UK and as you can see we have the UK weather welcoming us with a cold nice rain um, yeah and here we go another year another country another adventure every adventure country track has its own dedicated start and end point for the ACT UK we've chosen Clanthony Priory it's a 12th century monastery found deep in an almost forgotten valley in the Black Mountains. Not only impressive to look at, but with its own little hotel and a campsite close by, this might be the perfect base camp for setting up for your trip. Guys, it's so easy, <laughs> just one word. Let's do it again. Say welcome. Welcome to ACT UK. Done. Guys, welcome. This is the ACT the Adventure Country Tracks UK and I'm very happy that we're here finally. Yeah, we got a warm welcome with slight rain like it is usual in the UK, but we're happy to be here and looking forward for the next days. Yeah, so big group, 
uh, and only how many months since the last ACT? Not even a year. So we are quite excited to be back on the road with the entire crew and looking forward to five, six days of fun. Well, I first heard about Adventure Country Tracks um, a while ago, actually. It, it keeps popping up. Um, I, I think when you, when you kind of work and play in the, in the, in the, in the motorcycle industry, it, it, um, this, this name comes up. And then when Harley Davidson said, look, would you, it was Harley Davidson Germany said, would you, would you want to come along um, and ride a, ride a Pan America and, you know, for six or seven days across Wales, you know, Isle of Man, in, into the Lake District and all of that. Well, it, it was a pretty easy yes, really. And, you know, the idea of, of, of promoting adventure and getting out there and, and, and offering up tracks that, that people would, ne would never find if, if, they didn't, if they didn't download these tracks and use them themselves. So, so I think it's a great opportunity. I'm really excited to be able to experience some of them. The Isle of Man, um, you know, to do a couple of laps. I'm going to do, I, I want to do it, I'm going to do a, if I can just touch a hundred mile an hour lap, I'll be absolutely happy. So, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Finally, our wheels are turning as we're leaving the Priory and we're getting the first impressions of this 160 km stage on day one. Okay, here we are in Wales on our first day. Look at everyone. Hello, everybody! Woo! Woo! And look at this view! Oh my lord, we've got days of this now. How lucky are we? What a start into this day. The first hour of riding just opens our eyes to some beautiful views. Tiny tarmac roads that blend into the green hills lead us north to reveal a vast outlook over central Wales. But it's time for our group's first real wake-up call as we're reaching the first bit of off-road for today. Needless to say, climbing up the rutted hill with some gates to open and close in between took some of us a bit by surprise. man who is officially disabled on this trip and I'm um, walking up the hill to close the gate I'm just saying that's all <laughs> but I'll be okay don't worry about me now everyone is kind of calibrated to the local track conditions the day continues with almost back-to-back off-road stages kilometers have been great off-road riding. It started already a bit tricky, so um, we started into the off-road part in the rain, so take care because it's slippery. It was a great fun, uh, a great group today, um, well for the fall trip, and um, I'm looking forward to the next off-road section. One of today's highlights is a ride alongside possibly the world's toughest golf course. The course has no fairways as such, just rock and rough grasses. The lost ball count for a round must be huge. The trail itself though is a cracker, rising up a series of rocky climbs.
Riding further along the track, the hill ridge between the Wye and Elam Valleys offers far-reaching views over empty countryside. It's followed by a water crossing that needs to be approached with some caution, but is doable with a bit of confidence. And for everyone who's interested in enjoying even more adventure riding, the Yamaha off-road experience in Clanidloys, located right beside today's track, could be a great stop off for some off-road riding lessons. It will be views like this that will announce the end of day one in McIntleth. But rather than sticking to the ACT track, we're taking a short detour to spend the night in one of the most iconic places for adventure riders in Wales, Nick Sanders' famous expedition centre, where we're given a warm and familiar welcome by the man who's probably set the most records for circumnavigating the world on motorcycles. Damn good cake, by the way. Just awesome. Well, they got in touch with me. In fact, John Bentman got in touch with me. He came along with Philippe to, uh, when he was kind of checking, checking the route out and doing a reconnaissance. And it just happens to be that, <coughs> excuse me, just happens to be that my expedition center is absolutely bang on the track. So it's great, it's a happy coincidence. We're very happy to, to have you guys here. We love being on the track. Um, and we know that Wales and the riding across Wales is just phenomenal. And we'll welcome anybody that comes here. First day, ACT UK. I have to say, it's uh, it started on on the, on the road. Um, um, amazing views, uh, really nice back country here in Wales. But then <laughs> the first 400 meters uh, of off road, I think, took everybody by surprise. It was quite technical, and um, yeah, the first 400 meters, I think, took us one hour. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it's great. A very long day. Uh, enjoyed it uh, very much. A great group of people this year again. Um, looking forward for the next days, but now I'm looking forward for food <laughs> and a beer. With our crew quickly engaging in a traveller's makeover, we're invited for one of the famous dinners in Caroline's Kitchen. What a way to end our first day on the Adventure Country Tracks UK, in a place that is home to so many stories from all over the world. And as if Nick Sanders and Charlie Borman weren't company enough, as a special surprise, Simon and Lisa Thomas have joined us for tonight, uniting probably millions of kilometres travelled on motorcycles in just the one place. Definitely a night to remember for all of us. Day one. What a brilliant start into this brand new adventure, with 160 kilometres that offer a full range of highlights you can discover in Wales. second day of the ACT. I mean yesterday night was just spectacular. I mean honestly I've never expected that. I mean we're here at Nick Sanders place and he's probably done a million kilometers uh, around the world. Um, and you have Charlie Borman who has been like made motorcycle his profession so he's traveling all the time. And then additionally to this Simon Lisa Thomas who has have been around the world uh, for the last 20 years and we met them approximately 20 years ago in Argentina. Um, they showed up as well because um, Lisa is a sister of Nick's wife and um, you know the combination of having like a few million kilometers on road and off road experience here in this center was just spectacular having dinner with them, having a beer, having a chat, um, keeping all these memories alive that we have with each other. It is just, just, just out of this world experience. What a night. I'm super sleepy a little bit and it was cold at night. My head was freezing, but it was super nice. And now, I guess we are ready to have another great day, day two of ACT UK. My secret morning routine uh, depends on every day. It's mostly, um, it's mostly uh, dictated by the weather, depending on, you know, if it's pissing with rain, then it's like, and if it's like this, it's like, 
but, uh, but it's always a good day if you're gonna go ride a motorbike, so. But yeah, but it's, it's what's the interesting thing is when you're doing trips like this, or long trips, you know, you, you actually stay in a different place every day. And so you have to, you have to make sure that you put everything in your bag. That's the key, not forgetting. Don't forget your charger. Don't forget your wash bag. That's really easy to do as well. Stupid things like that. That's the mundaneness of adventure. <laughs> what secrets do you keep in your pannier? Well, actually, I don't have much stuff with me. I have one bag with clothing. Um, and the other bag is um, carrying some WD-40, some oil, some uh, repair kits and that kind of stuff. So, um, traveling light here. Um, it's interesting, I mean, just with this kind of group, we decided to carry a satellite home with us um, because there's almost really no reception here in, uh, in Wales. Um, and of course, I really have a secret here. So even if everything goes down, if everything is breaking up, I fall to the water. Yeah. So normal clothing are just uh, all wet. I have this special bag here and there's a pair of gloves, a pair of underwear and a pair of socks. Um, and they are packed three times in a normal bag, in the bag and even the zip bag. It doesn't matter how good you are prepared and how good uh, stuff you take with you, you always need to have this last extra dry stuff with you. And it's not in the normal clothing, it is in the repair kit. Even if we wish to stay a bit longer at Nixander's place, we need to go on, as today we have one of those rare occasions, a fixed schedule. It's 220 kilometers for today's ride, setting a challenging distance between here and the port of Liverpool that we need to reach by 6 p.m. to catch today's only ferry to the Isle of Man. You mean seven, and when you mean 7.30 on the road, it's 7.30 on the road, so. British are not like that, are we? Uh, we sort of 7.30 means leaving about 10 past eight, but I know to be on my game when I come here, I tell you. Eventually, having refueled in the small town of McIntyreth, we're getting started into the tracks of day two. So here we are again on the morning of uh, day two of ACT UK, after a really nice evening at Nick Sanders' place. And as you can see, a wonderful start into day two. Um, today we will have a special, special stage because we're taking a boat, a ferry, to uh, an island uh, which is uh, dedicated to motorcycle riding somehow, but we will show you later, so stay tuned for more. In entering the Snowdonia National Park, our choice is riding the smallest road you can possibly find. Here, climbing a wooded valley. So, part of the ACT UK is also that you have to open and close gates on the track so it's uh, the best thing you can do is to have a rotation so every second rider is closing the gate and then adding the group Close. again turning west towards the coast for a breathtaking downhill run between the steep cliff faces of the mighty 892 meter Kadar Idris and the 582 meter Craig Goch. It's time to salute to our escort in the sky and enjoy the ride. As we're reaching the coastline of the Irish Sea, the track leads us up into the hills and to a 13 kilometer long off-road trail locally known as Bomber Lane. A stage promising fantastic views and some challenging bits in between. And after one week of constant rain, today's track conditions will once more test the waterproofing of our gear. Yeah, there you go, look at you! Like an animal! Look at you! By 
One section in particular, that is only a couple of hundred metres long, has changed quite a bit since we've been here last for the scouting of this route. Deep ruts and loose stones will make you pick your line carefully. Probably more puddles than in the forests of Transylvania on our ACT trip in 2018, this trail will let you experience the difference between putting your pant legs in or above your boots. Well in the end, it's up to you, but at least there are less gates to open and close compared to the other parts that we've ridden so far. This is what we like! Like I said to Martin in the beginning, the stones moved away from me. All easy. <laughs> With the view opening over Barmouth Bay, we're almost at the end of this stunning bit of riding, and we're given a brief outlook over the landscapes ahead. Ah, the best one. Yeah, it, it's great fun. It was definitely, for me, the best part of, uh, of the off-road sections till today, and um, awesome. <laughs> Uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, plenty of grip on the wet rock, funnily enough. You don't think there is, but there is. And uh, the World Raid is coping brilliantly. I mean, the great suspension, lots of torque, take everything usually in second gear, and it just goes up anything. Fantastic. The way down from the ridge line is just beautiful, and with this view, it's hard to stay focused on the track. Soon we will switch back to asphalt again, making up some time on today's schedule with a smooth but no less spectacular ride. Oh, this is just the nicest road to ride on, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine riding along here? I mean, we're going, you know, at a nice pace, but on the Isle of Man, they are doing 200 miles an hour. <laughs> and they're going yeah. in and out of the shadows and the leaves and changing, changing um, conditions and flat out. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. The anticipation for the Isle of Man is high, but with even more off-road stretches ahead for today, we have to make a decision. As we're already a big group, Filming this trip takes a long time. We're cutting parts of the track just to save some time and to reach Liverpool in time for our ferry in the evening. The sometimes so annoying German preference for punctuality and of course local track knowledge brought us here just in time to join the queue for our passage over to the Isle of Man. And yes, everyone is excited as it will be the first time setting foot on this iconic island for many of us. I'm super excited because I've never been to the Isle of Man, so I'm, I'm actually really, really looking forward uh, to experience motorcycle heaven or history. I don't yeah. know. Yeah? Absolutely. So it's, it's on the bucket list for every motorcycle rider. So I think so. I'm fulfilling the dream. And One box check. tick. Check. Done. Thank you, Adventure Country Tracks, for bringing us there. It's not as adventurous as other ferries from past ACTs, but with an estimated cruise time of around three hours, we're not complaining about a bit more comfort. Welcome to the Isle of Man. I think that's the island with the most passionate motorcycle spirit at all.
you should plan well ahead on this 220 km long stage for day two. And if you want to extend your stay in Wales, the Harley Davidson Adventure Centre in Laninog will be a perfect opportunity to take a spin on the Pan America with Dakar rider Mick Extens. So here we are. What a feeling to be among probably the most exciting motorcycle culture and history in the world. We're on the Isle of Man. Well, road racing isn't exactly what we're after with a group of adventure bike riders, but as Elvio said yesterday, this place is on many a rider's bucket list. And even though we're here around three weeks after the TT, we will still experience this island's unique atmosphere. To ride the TT course for ourselves will be an exceptional experience, and we will go where the racers go, only of course at road legal speeds, but this will make us all the more amazed by the courage of the riders that ride this course at speeds of up to 200 mile an hour, just inches away from the curb stones, the walls and the trees. But there's also another, lesser known part of the Isle of Man. It's the hidden off-road tracks the locals call greenways that will take us far away from the road racing and they will offer a whole new outlook on this island. So it's lucky enough that we'll have two full days here to dive into both of these worlds. Day three of the Adventure Country Tracks UK will kick off at the start line of the TT course. But rather than blasting off down Bray Hill, heads in a reverse direction towards Ramsey. Welcome to day three of ACT UK. We are at the Isle of Man, the island of motorcycle passion. Riding the fabled tarmac backwards and then entering the gravel roads feels like a double blasphemy. But let me tell you, it isn't. And the first bits of off-road can set the level for today's riding quite high. It's like rocky terrain and beautiful views. Sometimes that's better than a coffee in the morning to wake you up. <laughs> This is so good! So, Patrick. No, my name is John. Uh, <laughs> the guy from Yamaha said I could borrow his bike. <laughs> After passing Ramsey, the track climbs up the hills again and takes us into the countryside far from what we all know from the TT films. Once you're at the top of this section, you'll find plenty of trails meandering through the hillsides. But with only limited access for motorised vehicles, we strongly request that you stay on the legal lines to preserve the nature and to be a fair companion to the hikers and the bicycle riders that you might meet. On the way down, the track narrows more and more. Fun to ride, but challenging in some corners. So it's better to keep some distance when riding in a group to maintain visibility on the track. Lovely. I love it. Back on tarmac and entering a part of the TT course again, we soon turn left and head towards the northmost point of the island. We ride some curvy tarmac roads and then take an opportunity to stop and visit the impressive U TT Museum. 
Do you know, it's funny, I've been coming to the TT of, for the Isle of Man, for the TT, for about, I suppose, 10 or 12 years. And, um, and I've, always, I've always flown in and watched it and then, um, and then had a look around the different places. But funny enough, I've never actually ridden around the island. So it's actually quite nice to see a different part of the island. And, and it's much, much bigger than you think. And, and that lovely feeling of when you drop on to the bits of the actual TT, circuit and you can see the signposts and you can see the uh, all the all the protection and the, it's funny because they've got these 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 big um, uh, telegraph poles and, and 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 walls and they just have a little bit of um, hay bales just protecting I think protecting the walls not really the riders but anyway it is it's just beautiful to be here it's real biking country for me as a motorcyclist to come here on this island is a special feeling but to be honest uh, I really enjoyed it off-road today the weather was fine and also the, the surface we were riding was was nice and smooth and uh, yeah it's a completely different feeling enjoying the Isle of Man off-road and uh, yeah really liked it and thumbs up for that There's a lot to discover on this 180 km long stage, but we're hungry for some more gravel. Crossing the famous Balaf Bridge that we will visit again tomorrow leads us straight up into the mountains and to our next bit of off-road. Riding along the hill ridge on days like this will offer far-reaching views and most likely it will only be a flock of sheep that will cross your path. Every once in a while, we will switch from gravel to asphalt, connecting the most beautiful parts on this island surrounded by the Irish Sea. One spot you should not miss is the Beach Appeal, with its Viking-built castle, and perhaps as importantly, the Peel kiosk, to regain some calories with a good helping of chips, and then some award-winning ice cream from Davison's. Fair enough, as it marks the halfway point for today. The ride continues and the back-to-back -back off road sections can become tricky, mostly depending on the weather conditions. But be prepared for some long and deep ruts which will require a solid balance on your bike. Oh, oh. It looked good. Yeah. Like a dance. A dance with the tenor. but the rewards will follow with some unique and breathtaking views across the islands and seas. Okay, there we go, that's nice. Yeah, you know, this, this happens if you have 15 guys on a, on a trip with the ACT crew, they will all end up like this. Anyway, so coming to the Isle of Man is a really classy moment and a really great moment for me because I always wanted to come here. Oh yeah, um, you, you wouldn't expect it to be this adventurous, to, to say the least. Um, the, tra the, the tracks we found uh, are really, really nice to ride and uh, yeah, really you don't see a lot of road racing uh, unless you come by the track and, and you see signs of it. But yeah, it's, it's really, really incredible. Um, yeah, you can be pretty far away from road racing on the Isle of Man. We just experienced this today with uh, some really, really amazing off-road, uh, very technical. Uh, even I <laughs> uh, did have a small um, crash on the deep ruts. I, I really don't like the deep ruts, but um, amazing views here. Uh, the off-road is great. 
and I'm really looking forward to actually learn uh, the TT track tomorrow. Coming here to the Isle of Man is, is very special. Additionally, I mean, UK is an island and we had to bring all the stuff and people over. Um, coming to the Isle of Man is not only a dream for most of us, um, it is also a challenge when it comes to finding proper on and off-road combination here on the island. But it is possible. I mean, the stretches that you found off-road, they are um, not as easy. Um, it's not as smooth riding, so it's more technical. You need to have a little bit more knowledge how to ride. Um, but the difference is that even the small tarmac roads, they are so spectacular, they are so small. And sometimes I have the impression they are more hard to ride than the off-road sections because they are slippery, there is um, a lot of rocks there and um, there is a lot of um, broken tarmac. So um, everything feels like being very remote and being on one of the last adventure country tracks. So as we've discovered a pretty much unseen part of the island today, we're more than excited to hit the streets on our extra day that we're going to spend here. For us it's clear we can't visit the Isle of Man without feeling the thrill of a ride along the TT course. Imagining the bravery it takes to run blind corners at top speed, where on a normal day like now, people are doing their groceries or where children are taking the bus to school. So everybody, hi, welcome. This is the Isle of Man, this is the TT circuit, and we're at the grandstand, also known as the Pits. Because this is it's a funny name, isn't it? The Pits, where we do the refuel. Yes. And um, it's a race that's been going since 1907, so it's got a super long history. Um, fantastic, called the Tourist Trophy, because originally it was all about the tour. A bit like, this is a tour, isn't it? That we do with ACT. So, but competitive, or sporty. So anyway, we're here. And uh, I was here only a fortnight ago for the TT 2022, uh, working with a team, and very exciting it is too. It's like no other race on the planet because it's so <clears throat> intense and scarily risky, as we know. But uh, also probably the pinnacle of sort of motorcycle sporty excellence because there's nothing quite like it. It's like the Everest of um, motorcycling. We've both done a, a worked in the pits for races and. Yeah. Um, and uh, all I had to do was clean the screen of the motorbike and then another guy was filling and another guy was changing the tire and uh, and I think I was more scared than the rider was because yeah. <laughs> imagine if you just smeared the screen yeah. and, and, and they'd, over they'd be down like that and they can't see anything and yeah. then I'd be responsible because yeah. you know? they've done all the hard work all you had yeah. to do was one job and you didn't make it but, so it's uh, kind of like that isn't it and then when, 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 he, when he rode off the, the, the three of us were just looking at each other and we just all burst out screaming and hugging each other and, and it was just the most it was the most exhilarating moment yeah it's just incredible and to celebrate this moment we came up with our own challenge to start into our tt day okay we've got team 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 harley davidson and team yamaha coming into the pits of the tt now it's most important they're going to come in they've got to be as quick as possible here they go okay team harley have got an advantage with more people They've got them and they've got to do the, the, the chain, the visor, the petrol, chain the oil. Yamaha are, are a little bit behind. Got yes, but and they're off. Oh well. It's a clear winner. I think Yamaha. Oh wait, you, the Yamaha have done a really good job. They're off. Alright. Well, I think it was a clear, a clear decision. And I'm the umpire for today, and I say. Team Harley Davidson have won! I'm very surprised that, you know, six against three. That's all I'm saying. Here they are. Excellent, excellent. The Team Harley really did smash it, I have to say. I'm so sorry, but you're, you were good, but your team let you down. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So here we are on our spare day at ACT, that's the first time we have an extra day and this is just because we're on the Isle of Man and right now we're on, on the TT racetrack. Um, so if you look 
it's you know it's a regular street and they will go here with an average speed around 200 kilometers per hour so this road gets really narrow this is an experience of its own and even our road race innocents are astonished by the course signposts with the section's names pop up at the side of the road sections that most of us only know from countless videos on the internet we're passing by only inches from people's homes alongside curbstones you wouldn't want to touch at regular speed and over bumps that will knock the life out of you and your suspension if you don't approach with some caution. Today we don't go to off-road because we have the national championship, British championship of Enduro here, as you see. Uh, they are doing most of the, our tracks in off-road and uh, we cannot go. Uh, but we have uh, we have really nice experience here in the racetrack, having the feeling of the racers here and uh, in these roads that are completely crazy. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice day today. Yeah, we're here at the Belov Bridge, which is a famous part of the TT track, where the riders come over there and then they have some good air time. That's a really nice place to be. But the funny thing is that the ACT UK actually includes parts of the TT track and includes parts of the British Enduro Championship. So both tracks are included in the ACT track. I think this is worth to go, right? After passing Ramsey, we're heading towards sections like Gooseneck and entering the mountain section, where even on regular days, there's no speed limits. In our eyes, this is just crazy. Although at the same time, we kind of love it too. Reaching Snaefell, the island's highest point, we're all in the mood for a coffee break. Okay, make that lunch. So there's no opposition to stop at the Victory Cafe. So just like we did, we recommend you also stay one extra day to discover the Manx Island. Enjoy the 180 km long ACT track with some spectacular off-road stages and feel the thrill of riding the legendary TT course. Then taking the historical relics that date from Victorian era right through to the Viking times. But be aware that the ferry taking us back to Haysham tomorrow will leave quite early, so don't spend too much time in one of the many pubs in Douglas on your last evening. This morning we're leaving the island fully loaded with fresh memories. It's hard to say goodbye after two exceptional days where we fell in love with this place. Good morning, thank you. And the early start today to catch our four hour ferry ride from Douglas to Haysham doesn't make it any easier for us. But still, our spirits are high. Welcome on board the Isle of Man Sea Bucket Company vessel, Ben McCree. So this will be the new ACT headquarter um, from the Isle of Man, it's right there. Crossing the halfway point of the journey, with only two more days to go, it always feels a bit sad on the one hand, but on the other it gives you a good feeling of having accomplished something. A four hour passage on a ferry feels pretty long, so with the help of Charlie's charm and our brilliant idea of making the ferry go faster, we're invited to a private tour around the workings of this vessel. Let's find out. All boats, you know, taking over the boats. Okay, that's true. Why do got have a chat with the captain and see if it's hard, you know, get the throttle Let's do it. on. Okay, so. I think we can make this happen, you know. I think let's try and take it. After a friendly welcome on the control deck, we were given detailed instruction about which buttons and switches better not to touch. So I need to press this one and then I go here and, and you know, no, go like no. this. That, that, this is for the bow thrusters. This is for the main engines. You oh, that's this one, one here. So, uh, yeah, yeah, these just are... Just keep your little grubby fingers off the, off the button. Well, we're thinking you know, one, one like this and one like that. And 
holy smokes, this is a GPS device that would make even our track manager Felipe jealous. The officers are promising that we're already going at the maximum speed, but we want to have a look for ourselves because everything that's run by an engine can be made to go faster. And now as we're diving deeper and deeper below decks, we found another control room with a one-to-one -one copy of all the buttons we were not allowed to touch upstairs. As you can see, the like priority is here or up there? So in, in the worst case, who, who well, is the power? Now that we've been given a crash course in marine engineering, we feel confident enough to take things into our own hands. So we're heading down to the engine room. And let me tell you, there's a hell of a lot of noise and heat down here. After successfully revving up the engines into two stroke dimensions, our job here is done. Time just enough for a quick selfie with the astonished crew members and to climb the stairs again because our destination port is already in sight. So let's get back on the bikes and get ready for today's ACT stage. Arriving in Haysham is only the one main road leading out, including some stretches of highway. But after just around 30 minutes, we're back in the countryside again entering the Yorkshire Dales National Park. And a couple of minutes further along the track, we're entering the gravel for the first time on this 140 kilometer long stage of day four. done to my nose. <laughs> I was following you and you know nice happily and then you hit me with mud and, and then after the mud you hit me with a stone. I should have had my visor down. Just shows you. It's a Sunday day off. It's a day to be out. So um, yeah I thought I'd come out on, on the old AJP here and uh, what a surprise to bump into everyone here. Lovely. Nice day for it. <laughs> <laughs> Small roads are fun to ride and the views over stone walls to grassy hills and into the little villages present new scenes for this trip. This is so typical for Northern England and looks almost picture postcard perfect. moments like this that make an ACT a true experience for adventure bike riders. Discovering new places every day, whether it's here in the UK or in one of our other countries we've travelled so far. Taking the time to soak in all the impressions. That's what will make long-lasting memories 
and that's what we want to offer to you when you'll be riding this track yourself one day. I think the ACT is a uh, inspiration for adventure riders because it provides um, challenging tracks and smoother ones combined with a beautiful landscape. In just one word, it's freedom. The freedom to do what you want, go wherever you want to go, to have all your stuff with you, to be, um, yeah, only free. Even though it's a relatively short day in terms of distance, the off-road stages of today will take us quite some time. Riding a series of off-road sections over the Yorkshire high country known as fells, the trail is mostly gravel and rock, but we'll ask for some momentum and a little technique on the climbs. The scenery has changed noticeably compared to Wales or the Isle of Man, offering wide open landscapes and a true feeling of remoteness. Also sections like the one leading across Darnbrook Fell down to Littendale, which descends mostly on grass and can be tricky if wet, but if necessary in bad weather conditions there's an on-road alternative close by. Come on JB, you can do it! After a road ride up the Wharfdale Valley, the last off-road sections should prove very enjoyable as the track rises to nearly 550 metres and the high moorland offers vast views. This is a stunning bit of riding right from where you leave the tarmac. This is what we're here for and everyone is enjoying this part before the day ends in the town of Hawes. As accommodation in Hawes can be limited and we're a big group, we decided to extend this day with a 30 minute ride into yet more valleys to stay in a really fantastic location, the Fat Lamb Inn near Kirkby Stephen. We advise you should also consider pre-booking your stay at the end of day four. What a day! Beautiful! I really need to say thank you to Jonathan and Philippe for getting this nice tracks. It was an amazing day. Nice off-road riding, nice sceneries. The weather was great. It's, it's just one word, great. So with a four hour ferry ride from the Isle of Man to Haysham and another 140 kilometers on the bike, you also should be prepared for a late arrival on the penultimate stage of the Adventure Country Tracks UK. Oh, you're so quick. I'm, I'm, I'm professional. Wow. I'm professional. Look at this. Great, obviously. Um, look, guys, I mean, um, 
the, the, this here is is a perfect pub. It's a fat lamp. Um, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the north of uh, England, and uh, already last um, 60 minutes, 90 minutes of that trek on day four, we have been passing through these little villages um, that are, you know, they're not spectacular, but there are these little stone houses and people sitting in front of these little stone houses and. Um, I think there was a white lion and the white swan and the, you know all these great names. What you what you think about when you are thinking about British pubs and um, and then you come here and and here is not only a British pub but it's also a hotel location and then you have all these um, the, these collection items of, of motorcycles, of cars, of the Goodwood uh, motor circuit and all that kind of stuff. So, so you feel home immediately when you come here and um, they have great food, they have great beer and they're, they're very welcoming here. Um, and this is what, what we want with, with the ACT. I mean, you, you really want to go into the rural sites and um, you want to experience the real culture of a country. And I, I don't know how many people come here, but I didn't see that much tourism. Um, to be here in a local pub with the locals, eat the local stuff, um, I think this is pretty cool. It's mornings like this you wish you could wake up to on every single day of a trip. But hey, we're in Northern England, so the weather will change again for sure. It's our final day for this year's Adventure Country Tracks, and with more than 800 kilometers behind us, we're excited for the last 220 that will wrap up this, the sixth edition of this project. The sweeping roads leading from our hotel back to Hawes where the track will start officially, are a real pleasure to ride. A tiny band of asphalt drawn into the landscape. And even with some rain this morning, there's nothing that could dampen our enthusiasm for riding. Good morning, sir. After a 30 minute commute to our starting point, it's time to refuel one last time to be ready for day five of the ACT UK. We're climbing up to the first bit of off-road for today that's promising a fantastic start with a rocky descent down an old Roman road known as the Cam High Road that leads from the high point on Weatherfell back down into the valley of Wensleydale. With its big rocks and stone steps, this ride can get demanding in bad weather conditions, but the seven kilometers of tire and suspension testing with fully loaded bikes is worth every meter. And this, once more, is all part of the ACT concept. We want to provide destinations and tracks that you can ride on your adventure bike without being afraid that you're on a trail that only smaller enduro bikes could get through. It's about traveling, not about competition or the ultimate test of you and your bike. Even though, and especially here in the UK, we do recommend solid off-road riding skills as a foundation for your adventures. Our UK track has a lesser percentage of off-road stages compared to our other destinations, but the level of riding skills needed and also the time you will spend on these sections will offer a good balance. And navigating by GPS track only instead of GPS routes, that is to say without the aid of turn-by-turn -turn instructions, is also part of the experience when riding the ACTs. today's track and after descending into the valley again we'll be back on smooth and twisting roads and passing some of this region's historical relics such as the 14th century Bolton Castle, a veteran of the English Civil War and that once jailed Mary Queen of Scots for six months. It seems that numerous English castles got their fair share of her, perhaps all planned well ahead to become modern day tourist attractions. Hey these people have got to live off something these days, right? What follows next along our track is a stretch of gravel unlike any other off-road so far. We're riding through Redmire Moor, where old coal mining works have left a strangely barren wilderness. Probably not as poisoned as the old copper mines of Sao Domingos on our Portugal track, but definitely a lost places moment you might enjoy. The 
and also the connecting on-road sections that follow will keep the level of fun high while the views are vast. Today we will have to face the unavoidable lowlands gap between the Yorkshire Dales and Moors. It's a one-hour stretch of mostly small and rural roads, an ideal time to fill up on supplies if needed before approaching the Hamilton Hills at the start of the Yorkshire Moors. The moorlands are impressive with their vast views, tiny roads and the crowning glory that is the upcoming 19km hill ridge trail known as Rudland Rig. <laughs> After two short back-to-back off-road sections, our finish line comes within reach. The coastline of the North Sea and the old port city of Whitby are an impressive finish point for our journey. Whitby's connection to world exploration and discovery is strong, for this was the home of Captain James Cook, who did so much to chart the new worlds in the 18th century. As well, Gothic novelist Bram Stoker was fascinated by this place, inspiring him to make Whitby the English landfall for Dracula. And once you arrive here at the Whalebone Arch next to the Captain Cook statue, overlooking the port entrance with Dracula's haunt, the famous abbey in full view, it's clear that you will have completed the ACT UK. For us, this place will always be connected with all the memories of an exciting motorcycle journey that started only six days ago in Wales. The fun we had, the tracks we've ridden, and the friendships that have developed. ACT UK, that was hard work for all of us, for finding the right tracks, for the weeks of scouting, and for putting all the small pieces together that are necessary to make this an adventure country track for you. And without the support from you, the community, the many enthusiastic riders who have followed our previous tracks, the ACT club members and our partners within the industry, all this would not be possible. Coming to United Kingdom, you, you, of course you can go to all the known cities, all, all the known uh, places that you can see also on YouTube, that you can see uh, the, the pictures on, on Google, but this is what United Kingdom is all about. It's not only about the, the, the small cities. We have seen places here that are amazing. The construction, like you said, the pubs, this is the true culture and the, the spirit of the people that really live in here. And the landscapes, I mean, come on. What we've seen today, the landscapes, it was, I mean, it's epic. I like the winding roads here. You know, it's going up and down and it, it just feels like it's built for motorcycles. But also any or every ACT is different. Every country is different. This is the first one more in the northern, all the others were more in the south. So it is different to the other ones. The weather is different here. It's, it's a little colder. Really, do you think so? Yeah, it might <laughs> we be. It might, oh, be. Yeah, yeah. it might be a maybe, little bit maybe. more rain if you look to the green here. We can, we I can would discuss this. that a little bit. And um, also the tracks are different. It's a little less off-road than, for example, Portugal or Greece. But the off-road is great. It's, it's, it's a little bit more technical, less, less fast. Um, I really enjoyed the tracks here. And um, I think if you guys like the UK and the idea about the UK, it's a perfect, it's a perfect ACT. 
And I'm coming back to the landscapes. I mean, come on, uh, guys. Um, what about your landscapes? This is, uh, this is like rolling hills. I mean, you have really lush green stuff everywhere. It We're is. talking about the the the, the um, walls. I mean, these walls built out of these stones. You see them all. Everywhere. And they were built by one guy. <laughs> Probably. They told me it's one guy <laughs> building all the drywalls in the UK. One way. But it's one spectacular. Way. I mean, they're everywhere and um, you ride right between them and it's it's really nice stuff. Yeah, it, it, adventure is not all about off-road. Adventure is when you are out of your natural environment. And I or think... Your comfort zone. You, your comfort zone. So I think here also, uh, first for um, the non-British, being driving on the left, it's, uh, it will be a challenge. Uh, the roads are definitely narrow and um, um, you just have to, to adapt to what you have here. Um, and speaking about the landscapes a little bit, you know, sometimes you see movies, um, maybe James Bond movie or some things like Lord of the Rings that were in, were in New Zealand. But here we were placing in, in valleys, in, in places that are just unbelievable, breathtaking. So um, we were even trying to find a name for a mountain, people saying that it was made by giants just because we had enough time to be uh, talking about these uh, little things. But it is like that, it is amazing all the things that you see here and um, when you are watching something on TV, you, you never get this. You need to come here and experience. Cheers to that, so cheers to ACT UK guys. Hey, cheers. And what's next for you? Well, if you haven't already, go to adventurecountrytracks.com. We invite you to become one of our members, download the latest GPS tracks and see for yourself. Your next great adventure is closer than you think. And also, if we talk about... <laughs>